After posting my video asking why the European Parliament in Strasbourg is built to resemble the Tower of Babel in Peter Bruegel's famous painting, someone suggested it's actually modelled after the Colosseum in Rome. So, being in Rome, I thought I ought to take a look. Bruegel's painting is also said to have been at least partly inspired by the ruins of the Colosseum, but his Tower of Babel is accurately painted as a ziggurat tower intended as a political and religious centre of rebellion against God. Now, if the Capitoline Hill was a political and spiritual heart of Rome, the Colosseum was a statement of her imperial dominance. With money looted from the temple in Jerusalem in AD 70, it was built to entertain the masses with armed duels to the death between gladiators. We know the Tower of Babel remained unfinished because the Lord confused their language. An act of God also destroyed the Colosseum. It was ruined by a succession of earthquakes and then looted for the stone. But you know, if the Tower of Babel was built with an Antichrist spirit, the Colosseum here in Rome is not exactly as pure as the driven snow. Less washed in the blood of the Lamb, more bathed in the blood of the martyrs. During lunch intervals, executions ad bestias will be staged. Those condemned to death will be sent into the arena, naked and unarmed, to face beasts, notably lions, which would tear them to pieces. Christians were among those put to death in the Colosseum in the Rome of Revelation 17. In Acts we read, These that have turned the world upside down have come hither also, whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. That was sedition. You could worship who you wanted in ancient Rome, so long as you also worshipped the Roman gods. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 13, we read of the martyrdom of Bishop Antipas for refusing to make sacrifice to Zeus. Well, the Romans adopted Zeus as Jupiter, the head of their pantheon, Jupiter Conservator, to conserve and protect the eternal city. Rome was personified and deified as the goddess Roma, as Urb Sacra, the sacred city. And Rome was sat on Jupiter, just as Revelation 17 says the woman is sat on the beast. Or, as Europa is sat on Zeus, or Jupiter, as the bull all over the European Union. But Jupiter couldn't save Rome. The Eternal City was sacked in the 5th century. To this day, the ruins of Rome are a tourist attraction. Or could it be it's the Antichrist spirit of Rome that is eternal? The Emperor Hadrian, the first man to use the expression Urbs Eterna, the Eternal City, suggested that Rome could be forever reborn all over Europe. But could Imperial Rome itself be revived? The leaders of the six founding countries of the European Economic Community, the EU's forerunner, gathered to sign the Treaty of Rome on top of the site of Jupiter's temple in March 1957. A Belgian, Paul-Henri Spark, a socialist and agnostic, had authored the treaty and decided the venue. On the eve of the ceremony, he was overlooking the ruins of the Roman Forum with his right-hand man, Baron Robert Rothschild. Rothschild remembered Spark saying to him, I think that we have re-established the Roman Empire without a single shot being fired. When the heads of state gathered to sign the European Constitution in 2004, in the same place as Spark's Treaty of Rome was signed all those years before, the Italian government erected a plaque which spoke of this most sacred Capitoline Hill, which is the citadel of this bountiful city and of the entire world. Under the Constitution, the nations of Europe might coalesce into a body of one people with one mind, one will and one government. The Eurocrats are convinced they are reviving the Roman Empire. You know, looking at it from a spiritual point of view, the same spirit of rebellion, arrogance and futility that was present at Babel is still here in ancient Rome. And I think I see an echo of it in the European Union.